can I kill an emu? That's what we're here to try. <laughs> oh, shit. Shit. <laughs> We're here at Kahuna Koala Park to check out some emus and also to tell you guys a little bit of a story about Australia and its war with emus. That's actually a thing. Yep. Let's go. So the year was 1932. World War I had just ended. A whole bunch of veterans had come back to Australia and instead of getting a pension, they were given by the government farmland in Western Australia. Now, farmland in Western Australia is absolutely useless. <laughs> it's like dry, it's arid, it's sand. As if PTSD wasn't enough, they were also given shitty farmland. What a gift. Thank you, Australian government. Around the same time, Australia was also going through a depression, which meant that everything was shit. Just nothing was good. Farmers were selling their wheat, getting no money at all for all the hard work they're putting in. Is this emu coming? Oh, look at this. Squad goals. <laughs> Around this time in the depression, the government was also promising subsidies to the farmers, promising that they'd help finance their farming to help them out, essentially. That never happened. They're like a dodgy brother. Oh yeah, no, I swear I'll, I swear I'll I can pay you back, bro. Just, uh, you know, hook us up with some more wheat. Around the same time, about 20,000 or so emus began migrating inland. And wouldn't you know it, the flat, arid, shitty farmland with all this delicious wheat was the perfect place for the emus to settle. These emus would come in, kick down the fences and start eating up all the farmers crops. And the farmers are like, are you kidding me? Everything is shit right now. I cannot handle this. Not only do we have shitty farmland, our wheat is worth nothing, but now what little it is worth, the emus are eating it up and they're kicking down our fences. Fuck these emus. Because these farmers were ex-military, they did begin shooting emus with their rifles, but it wasn't enough. One gunshot and they'll scatter like, <laughs> you know what they scattered more when you laughed? <laughs> In all Australians, we have an innate ability to tame wildlife. As you can see here, I have it under my, my spell. So, of course, for the farmers, this was an issue. They needed to get rid of these emus so they could make money and feed their families. So the farmers were like, we know machine guns exist. We were in the fucking war. So what they did is they went to the government and they were like, yo, government, we know you have machine guns. Hook us up with a couple machine guns. We need to take out these emus. The government was like, okay, well, everyone's pissy with us because we promised them money and we didn't fucking give it to them. We gave them shitty farmland. We were essentially fucked these guys over. We need the good PR. So the government was like, all right, we're going to send out- Major Meredith. He's one of our military best. We're going to send him out with about five people and two Lewis guns. Now, Lewis guns are these old fashioned machine guns. You had to mount them and go- It wasn't the best thing, but it was 1932. So you couldn't really expect too much. So- Major Meredith. Got a, he got a few people in his squad, including one videographer. Cause he's like, this is going to be fantastic PR. I need you to film everything on your 1932 camera. We'll take care of this whole thing, right? And everyone's gonna love us. They're gonna think we're the best. On November 2nd, 1932, this squad rolled out to Western Australia to take care of the scourge that is emus. They rocked up, saw a group of about 500 or so emus. They laid in wait. The emus are maybe about where that bridge is. They shot and the bullets couldn't reach the emus. And the emus hear this, oh, fuck it. Let's get the fuck out of here. Like that, see? They fucking bailed, right? And the military was just like, shit, what the fuck do we do now? This is a dingo. Uh, this creature is famous for stealing babies. Uh, that's what I've heard. Not sure if it's true or not. <laughs> look at that, look at that evil baby killing look on its face. After that first failed attempt, they went further south to a dam where it is said that the emus were more tame. So at that point they were like, this is too hard. Let's put it on easy mode. <laughs> Major Meredith. And the emu killers <laughs> laid in wait near a dam. Lewis gun up already. About a thousand emus rock up, all drinking. This is the perfect opportunity. They start firing and after 12 rounds, the Lewis gun locks up. <laughs> this was the old days where you had to literally pull apart the gun <laughs> and unjam your gun and then reassemble it. By this point, the emus are like, fuck it, <laughs> and completely bailed. And they're going like, fuck, this is, this is an ordeal. This is no good. Over the course of maybe about eight days in total, there were several attempts to try and hunt down the emus. Excuse me. We will talk about the Great Geese War of 1947 later. I hate hecklers. <laughs> Oh, you're sitting. Oh, they sit with their knees like that. That's gross. Over the next eight days, Major Meredith and his squad of emu killers attempted several skirmishes against this squad of terrifying birds. 
and each one ended in failure. At one point they decided that the emus are too fast. Someone had a bright idea of mounting a Lewis gun on the back of a ute. A ute is a utility vehicle. Americans call it a pickup truck. A car at the front and flatbed at the back. The balance in the back of this car, the big heavy gun, a big burly man, a person driving, 1932 suspension. They chase after the emus, but the added weight meant the car couldn't keep up with the emus. <laughs> And because it was so bumpy, the guy couldn't get a good aim and he couldn't get a shot off. A farmer got so pissed off at this that he jumped in his car and he went to run over and he's like, fuck this. It went through his windscreen, got tangled up in the steering wheel and he crashed his car. And I think I need to get inside the mind of an emu. Oh. Oh. I touched it, definitely. By the fourth day, the military force observed that each pack had sort of developed its own leader. So they'd all be eating and then the tallest, buffest dude, probably that one, this guy of the squad, would stand up and keep watch. He was on sentry duty. Anytime the military rocked up, he'd be like, fuck it. And they'd all, they'd all scatter. They had no chance. The emus were outsmarting them at every single turn. So by the 8th of November, six days after they first initiated the war, 2,500 rounds of ammunition had been fired. Numbers vary, but the amount of emus that were killed reported to be around 50 to 250 emus. I'm more inclined to think that it was closer to 50. Come on, these guys are incompetent. They're baboons, okay? <laughs> Ornithologist Dominic Cervanti said, The machine gunner's dreams of point blank fire into serried masses of emus was soon dissipated. The emu command had evidently ordered guerrilla tactics, and its unwieldy army soon split up into innumerable small parts that made use of military equipment uneconomic. A crestfallen field force therefore withdrew from the combat area after about a month. Major Meredith compared the emus to Zulus in their military tactics. He said, and I quote, If we had a military division with the bullet carrying capacity of these birds, it would face any army in the world. They can face machine guns with the invulnerability of tanks. They are like Zulus, whom even dum-dum bullets could not stop. It was after that initial eight or so days that the military force was like, fuck this, this is too embarrassing. The newspapers were talking about it like it was the biggest joke. Here's a clipping from the newspaper. <laughs> Breaking news, the Great Emu War. 300 killed in first round. The Minister for Defence, Sir George Pierce, said today that acting on the information which appeared in the Eastern Press in regard to the use of personnel with military forces with machine guns, which had been provided at the request of the State Government of Western Australia and farmers whose crops were being spoiled by the incursion of large number of emus into the outer fringe of the wheat belt of that state, he had withdrawn the personnel with the guns. It was just a complete embarrassment. Even other countries were like, Australia is losing a war with emus, how lame. And other people were like, what the fuck is in Australia? After about a month, the farmers went to the government like, what the fuck? What happened? You were supposed to take care of these emus and you've just left after two weeks. The government was like, yeah, we kind of fucked up. We'll send another force out with more ammunition and we will take care of these emus, we promise you. The man that they elected to put in charge of this second strike force against the emus? Major Meredith. Their logic being that he had the most experience in dealing with emus. <laughs> You are rude. Both of you, ugh. You're scary. And your head doesn't make sense. Yeah, oh, you're not so tough with the fence between you, are ya? <laughs> so, the military force went back. This skirmish lasted from about late November to around January 1933. And in those few months, all up, they killed about a thousand emus. It wasn't successful by any means. Uh, if you fought a war against 20,000 people and killed a thousand of them, whilst they're breeding and growing more soldiers, it'd be a failure. Eventually they withdrew and it was regarded as one of the most embarrassing skirmishes that Australia was ever a part of. Eventually, farmers did come up with a solution to prevent the emus from getting in and affecting their crops. It was revolutionary, especially for the time. I think the best way to describe it is uh, they built better fences. They just built bigger fences so the emus couldn't get in. Why well, wasn't that the first thing they did? Oh, emus coming in. Oh, better build a wall. No, we need machine guns and we need to eradicate this species. It was at that point that Australia said, Emus, you are better than us. You have bested us in military combat. You are the superior intellect. <laughs> we are going to honour you by putting you on our coat of arms. If you ever come to Australia, on every 50 cent coin, you will see an emu and a kangaroo. Unless it is a special edition coin, it probably has like a picture of like a, like a kid assembling a jigsaw puzzle or some crap. We got this information from a bush tucker tour down south, but apparently the way indigenous Australians used to hunt emus is they'd cover their eyes and shake a bush. And the emu would be like, what the fuck is that? And that's when the indigenous Australian would go, boom, and knock the emu out. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
Hey, dickhead. I'm right here. I was invisible. See me now? Also, I saw a video of a man on YouTube uh, laying on his back and cycling his legs, which made the emus curious, and they came up to him. I didn't look very pretty doing that, did I? If the military employed these tactics, we would have no more emus left. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into some true Australian history, the Great Emmy War of 1932, one of Australia's biggest military blunders. If you enjoyed that, check out more. I've got links in the description. A huge thank you to Kahuni Wildlife Park for allowing us to film their majestic emus. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Sweet dreams. Haha, <laughs> 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 nothing's there. <laughs> Ah, oh, Jesus! <laughs>